Hi book lovers, it's Jenny at Julia Baby Jen and this is my November wrap up. Okay, so November was an okay month. Um, I don't didn't read nearly as much as I normally do. Part of that was I had a couple of really big books I read in there, so that was part of it. But um, anyway, let's get going on what I read. First off, I participated in two different readathons in the month of November. The first week I participated in a yearathon um, readathon, which I've been doing every month for a while now. And the theme this month for November was debut novels. So I was really excited about that theme. I love reading new authors. So, so um, yeah, so I had a lot of fun with that one. And that was actually where I did the majority of my reading of the month was during that readathon. Um, and then later, later in the month, I did the Tome Topple readathon, and I didn't do as well as I had hoped for that. Um, I really only finished three books for that readathon, and I'd hoped to read seven. I did finish a fourth one, but it was a day or two later, so in the middle of two more, but didn't finish them. So, eh, I did okay, I guess. So, um, I will talk about what I read and my thoughts. These books are in no particular order. I just stacked them up here and I'm just gonna grab them and talk about them. So first I have The Devil and the Bluebird by Jennifer Mason Black. Um, this was for the debut novels uh, pick. So this was a library book that I went and, and got. This looked really interesting. Uh, so this is a contemporary with a bit of magical realism to it. Um, so it has a little bit of fantasy mixed into it. It's about this girl named Blue, hence Bluebird, um, who knows a way that you can meet the devil on a street corner a certain way um, and asks for your greatest desire. Um, in return, you will be selling your soul for this desire, which is what her older sister did. Her older sister, once their, their mother died, um, abandoned her little sister, Blue, um, to, uh, to fulfill her dreams of being a singer. So Blue has now wants to find Cass, and so she goes and makes the same deal, and the devil gives her a magic uh, pair of shoes that will point her the direction she needs to go to find Cass, but he also takes from her her voice. Uh, so, so she is traveling around the country, hitchhiking mostly, trying to find Cass, and in a lot of ways, she's discovering herself along the way as well. And she doesn't have a voice, and she goes through all these insane, crazy adventures. Um, it is. This is a really fun book. It was a little deeper than what I was thinking it was going to be. I really, really love the premise. I really loved Blue. She was a great main character. And then some of the uh, odd characters she met throughout the story were also really interesting and unique and really fun. Um, it was, you know, not a completely original idea in some ways, but in some ways it was. And I really love um, how the devil was portrayed because she keeps meeting up with the devil throughout her journey, and he's hit, you know, he's pretending to be other people. And and I love the whole. Um, I guess I just love the whole moral of the whole story, which you, which I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to give away the ending. But it was it was a really good read. I enjoyed it. I sped right through this one. It was very fun. A really fun. Uh, contemporary with a with a fun twist um, with some with some um, fantasy in there so yeah I really enjoyed this one I don't know if I said what I gave it I gave it four stars then I have a shadow bright and burning by Jessica Cluis I gave this book three and a half stars I mostly enjoyed it actually as I'm sitting here I'm trying to remember remember it it was one of the first books I read in the beginning of the month and it just didn't stick with me that well which so uh, so this follow this is a fantasy and this follows a girl uh, who is a sorcerer and she's the first girl sorcerer in hundreds of years and she's revered because there's a prophecy that says that this female sorcerer can save their kingdom Basically, uh, these different creatures from mythology have come up and been steadily. There's been a war against uh, these these beings, and so they're looking for this girl to to get them out of this war and be the chosen one and all this. So, um, so the premise is really awesome, and I really loved the world building. I think it could have used a little bit more world building, but what we got was really interesting, and I really loved all that stuff. Um, I mostly liked the characters and I mostly liked the plot. There was a few things that were a little uh, nitpicky, I guess, that I didn't enjoy as much. 
My biggest issue was this, I think, was the writing. It was a, you know, a first time writer. I love writing. It was not my particular style of writing that I liked. It was all right, but I have a good flow and, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Getting from, from sequence to sequence, it just seemed to jump from like, sometimes from paragraph to paragraph without a lot, without, without a lot of segue in between. Um, so I just felt there was just a few things that, you know, because maybe she's a first time writer that will probably come as she writes more. It wasn't anything terrible. She wasn't a terrible writer. The, um, like I said, the, the, um, characters and the, there was a, lot, a good amount of backstory in here, which I really appreciated too. There just wasn't anything super mind blowing about it. It was still an enjoyable read and a fun story. I really liked it. Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Manis Calco. Uh, this one was really fun. I gave this four stars. It was very dark. I knew it was going to be, obviously. It was a thriller. It's about this girl who uh, incredibly smart, and she wants to study forensics. After the death of her mother, she basically wants to understand death more and more, and her uncle is kind of training her in forensics quietly on the side because she's a girl and it's not allowed. Then the whole story with the Jack the Ripper comes out and her uncle is one of the um, experts that the police are using to try to figure out this crime and the murder and all that. And so she gets kind of wrapped up into this and she's trying to solve this crime of Jack the Ripper. So there's a little bit of actual history in here along with, you know, a fun twist on it as well. And it's a really good suspense, really good mystery. Um, it's very dark. It's a little bit graphic. It took me a little bit to get into it because the very first chapter is of her um, doing an autopsy on a, a dead body, learning how to do an autopsy on a dead body, and it's very graphic. And a lot of the novel is very graphic. So it's kind of surprised me that it got through with the YA thing because it it's pretty graphic. Um, so, but I've read other YAs that have been just as graphic. So I guess, you know, there you go. But, so just that kind of caution on it. I'm a little squeamish when it comes to things like scalpels and surgeries and stuff. So normally blood and gore doesn't bother me. That, that kind of bothers me a little bit. And so it starts off with that and it was really hard to get through that first chapter. But once I did, the rest of it was really wonderful and I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I kept reading because the whole book is not like that. It's still a, a really interesting read. I love the main character. I loved all the characters. I kind of figured out who Jack the Ripper was as we got closer to the end, uh, but it was still fun surprise and, and it was just crazy. So, so I really like this four stars. <laughs> I forgot to mention I did another readathon as well this month. I did Seasons of Readings uh, Christmas Spirit readathon, and basically you can read anything you want, but you have to read one Christmas book. So it was the same time as Tome Topple, so I read some Tome Topple books for it as well. But I did read one Christmas book. I read The Twelve Days of Dash and Lily by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan, and I love this one. The sequel to Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, which I really liked. It's such a fun contemporary. So this takes place a, basically a year after um, the the Book of Dares, the first one. And it kind of gives you a little history of what's been going on with the two of them throughout the year. And there's been lots of developments and their relationship has cooled a little bit because of certain things that have happened. And so this is about um, Dash trying to reconnect with Lily because Lily's almost given up on their relationship at this point. So basically that's what this is. And so he's he's on a quest to try to, to to make her happy like you did in the Book of Dares. And it's, and it's really fun. I really enjoyed this. These This is just such a cute story. Both both books are. So very fun contemporary. Four stars. Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau. This was also for the debut books novel. I really liked this one. It's really funny. I gave it four stars. Basically, this is a very funny, funny book. Um, basically... Scarlett is a fanfic writer for this amazing TV show um, that has just gone off the air unexpectedly. And so she's got all these online friends and they write all this fanfic and people read her stuff. And so they're clamoring for something new. And so she comes up with a new fanfic story. So she starts a whole new story, but it's based off of people in her life. And um, it goes viral. And 
you can just see all kinds of problems with this and she has all kinds of issues. So she's not very popular. She has one best friend and a crush and things just aren't going well for her in real life. So she's kind of escaping to this online persona and this online life, which I think a lot of people relate to. Um, I was not social media was not really around and internet wasn't that big when I was in high school. This was a long time ago. We had internet, but it was more for research and things. There was no such thing as social media back then. Um, so, um, but I did, you know, once social media hit, I was really into it. And I've met a lot of people online with different interests that I wouldn't meet in real life. And so I kind of get that, although I'm very much myself uh, online as I am in real life too. So, she kind of makes up more of a persona uh, to it. So, but anyway, this is a really fun read. It's hilariously funny, but it's it's a little deeper than I thought, and I liked it. Four stars. The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. This is another debut novel read. I really liked this. Now, this is the start of a series, and it ends on kind of a cliffhanger. And I would call this a cross between Pretty Little Liars and 90210. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I I look at it. So it's it's a sci-fi futuristic world. Uh, this is the tower that's in New York City. It's a thousand floors tall, and it's basically like its own city. And it's actually built over where Central Park used to be. So this is like several hundred years in the future, not several, maybe a couple hundred. So there's all this technology, and that was one of the best things about this novel was the world building, the technology. So this is following a group of five kids. Um, so we jump from each of their perspectives and I liked every single kid that we were following for different reasons. A couple of them aren't so good, but I still really enjoyed each of their own little stories. And basically they kind of converge is what kind of happens. And some of them are friends, but they're basically this posh group of kids, except for one of them uh, who doesn't belong there and is, um, is a, basically a maid uh, who works on, on these levels. But basically, the higher up you live on this in this building, the richer you are. And so it follows these uh, this drama and soap opera, basically, between these five. Um, all you know is that someone has died. It starts off at the beginning of the novel that someone has, fell, has fallen off the thousandth floor. And so this, then it goes back in time and, and shows the events that led up to this death and how it happened. And so you're left guessing who, who did it who's the victim and how did this all come about and it's it's really fun and I just I really loved it it sucked me in really fun so if you like rich kid drama with sci-fi futuristic world uh, and a suspenseful mystery this one's for you it was a very fun read four stars I finally read Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Mass the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series Oh my goodness, I'm so glad I finally got to this one. I really enjoy this quite a bit. Um, there was a couple big twists at the end that I wasn't expecting, not that I'm surprised. Sarah J. Mass pulls those off pretty well. It's not as big as the twist um, at the end of Crown of Midnight. That was a huge twist, but there's still really big twists. And basically, this one really takes off as far as world building. We learn a lot more about the world. I think we learned a lot in Air of Fire, but we really learn a lot in this one about the world. And um, the maps and things are really important in this. It's, it's very helpful. And there's all kinds of things going down on this. Basically, one of the biggest things is um, Selena comes back to Rift Hold and meets up with Cole, and he's not so happy with her anymore. In fact, he becomes kind of a brooding dumbass, to be honest. And she's got a plan to try to take her kingdom back. And he just looks at her as a ruthless person. I'm not, not sure how his train of thought led to this point. But basically, he's um, trying to save Dorian. And she thinks Dorian is lost. And that's where their big disagreement comes from. Um, so it's about... Um, trying to save Dorian, trying to kill the king, trying to get her kingdom back. There's all kinds of things. And then, of course, she's dealing with um, the king of the, thing, the king of the assassins. I can't remember. Was it Aberyn? Aberyn, something like that. She meets up with him, and it's about her revenge on him. And a lot of different things that she's dealt with in her past come to this. So she is now Aelin, and she's trying to deal with 
Selena's past, basically, to get her up to speed and also take back her territory. She's all kinds of plans. There's a lot that happens in this. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I loved every minute of it. It's a huge book, but I flew through it because I was just so into it. Loved it. So, so yeah, five star read. Love it. And then for Tome Topple, I picked up Empire of Storms. Uh, this took, took me a really long time to get through, but I really liked it. What I love so much about this book is it brings in a whole bunch of characters from Selena's past that actually are in the prequel novellas in the Assassin's Blade. So if you haven't read the Assassin's Blade, I would suggest reading that before you read Empire of Storms because you're going to know so much more. And if it's been a while since you've read those novellas, I would say reread them before reading Empire of Storms because I forgot a lot of things. Um, and I need to go back, I think, and just reread this whole series again from start to finish at, before we get to the sixth book because I think I'm going to need a refresher on everything. But basically, in this one, um, Aelin is trying to amass an army so she can take back her kingdom. Uh, the uh, different lords or whatever have voted that they do not recognize her as a legitimate queen because they don't think that she knows enough about their country, that she's willing to do what it takes. They think, they think of her as a spoiled, tempered kid, and they don't think she can win back the land so she has gone off on her own to try to convince them and in doing that she's amassing an army and supporters so she can take back her kingdom so that's what the premise basically of this is all the kinds of stuff that, that is going on in the meantime a side characters and all kinds of different things and how they all converge and there's just so much going on in this one i can't really talk too much about it without giving my last spoilers but I, I am at some point going to do a series review on this so far because I'm so into this and I just, I want to talk a lot more about it. But I love this. Five stars, great fantasy. The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. I really like this one. This is another debut novel. I gave this four stars. This is a time travel set aboard a ship. Basically, this girl and her father, her father has a way to time travel as long as he has a map for a certain period in time. And it can be fictional or real. So it can be a historical map of, of the seas uh, that he'll go back and that he'll go back in time and look at, or it can be a mythological map that they could go see. But basically his goal is to get back to the girl's mother who died. He sailed away, he came back, and the mother was dead, and then he had his one-year-old baby. So he raised the baby on a ship. And she has the ability to find these different maps and read them and help him understand them so they kind of are a team but her big worry is she's not sure what's going to happen once they finally do get back to the time and this it's a map in Honolulu I think it was 1868 Honolulu once they get back there she's afraid she's going to disappear because of paradox so she she and she wants to be free and be on her own and their relationship is super complicated so that's basically the premise it's not a super fast moving book. It's very detailed, but I really enjoyed that. I liked all the detail. I loved, I felt like it was in these worlds with them. It was so wonderful. Uh, I just, I just loved it. I love the characters and then all the different twists that happen in the plot. Um, no, you're not sure who's good or who's bad or what's going on at any point. And I just really loved all that. So this was a really fun story. I really enjoyed it. I didn't do so well on my Rick Bray Orton challenge, but I did read The Mark of Athena, which is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series, and I loved it. Five stars, great mythology adventure. This one follows Annabeth quite a bit. This is more Annabeth's quest, and you're not really sure if what she's doing is right, but it's Annabeth. Come on. I love Annabeth, so, so I really enjoyed this, and then all of the camp kids are uh, the main characters. Uh, Roman and Greek, they're all together on this mission uh, to save the world now. And I love that all the characters have come together and learning about each other. It was just really fun adventure. Um, another classic, classically good Rick Riordan story. I loved it. And finally, I did my reread of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows for Tome Topple. So I finally finished my Harry Potter reread. Of course, there's Harry Potter Christmas going on right now, but I haven't rewatched the movies yet. So I'll do that with. The, with the um, with the book too, Merry Merry Christmas, uh, 
Harry Potter, Merry Christmas to you, or I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, but yeah, I love my reread. I've read this book probably half a dozen times now, and every time I just, this is my favorite book in the series. I know a lot of people didn't like as much as the rest of them. I loved it. I feel like this was the book that J.K. Rowling was trying to tell us all along. This was her moral. This was what she was trying to tell us. And she needed the other six books to get us up to speed to get there. But I feel like this is the story that we were meant to read. And I just really, really love this book. From beginning to end, it's perfection. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I love how everything comes together and everything in those previous books, every little thing matters in this last book. And it all ties up so wonderfully neatly and perfect. And that's so hard to do in such a big world like this. So... Uh, I just think J.K. Rowling's a genius. She really is. Um, these are, I definitely think, the best books of our time. In the last 50 years, without a, without a doubt, these are the best books of our, of our generation, of our time. And I will be surprised if there's anything else that ever comes out that is good as these. Um, just amazing. So, yes, I loved my Harry Potter reread. Five stars. Wonderful. So as you can tell, I had a really good book reading month. Everything was four stars or above except for one book, which was a three and a half stars, which is still a good read. So I had a really good reading month, even though I didn't read a lot. I read good quality reads. So there we go. That's all you can ask for. So leave me any comments below if you've read any of these books and what you think. And um, I hope everyone has a good day. I will talk to you later. Bye.